on guys. Today we're going to go through a beginner friendly flow, uh, but I want you to think of beginner less as easy, more as educational while accessible. And we're going to go through some of the foundational postures and movements and kind of break them down, get to know what we're engaging, what we're opening. With that in mind, I want you to remember that you know your body best. You know what's going on with you. And so I want you to use this time to really focus on getting to know your body, how it feels, how it functions. And the more time you spend focusing on your body, what feels good, what doesn't, what you think doesn't feel good but might be good for you, um, the more you'll realize what benefits you and what serves you best. Both here on your mat and out in the real world, you'll start to recognize more the effects of you know what you eat, what you drink, how you sit, how you walk, how you stand, all of these different things. And it might be a little annoying at times, but it's just so good to get to know how all of these things are affecting you. And so anytime you need to, you know, stop and just take a break, go for it. Anytime you need to stop the video and explore more, feel free to do that. But for now, I want you to come down to a child's pose. You can bring your knees wide or keep them together. Walk your hands out in front of you. Drop your forehead to the ground. Take a moment to get to know what's going on right now in your body. So you're bringing all of your baggage with you. If you're a runner, a spinner, you got tight hips, tight shoulders, whatever it is. Allow yourself to just be completely here, observing without evaluating. And then bring your attention to your breath. See if you can slow it down, smooth it out. And your intention is simply to become aware. Give yourself three, four, maybe five more breaths here. When you're ready, you're just going to pick your head up. You're going to thread your right arm underneath of your left armpit. And then notice any tendency for your left shoulder to pop up. I want you to press your left armpit towards the ground, so towards your right arm. Right palm faces up, back of your hand can be on the ground. And then press your chest gently towards the ground. Let the weight of your chest stretch out that right arm. You can bring your forehead to the ground or bring your left temple to the ground. Look over to the right. As you let the weight of your chest fall on that right arm, I want you to gently pull your right shoulder head away from your body. So pull your right shoulder head gently out to the right. See if that intensifies the stretch anymore. Stay here. Take a couple of breaths. When you're ready, you're just going to pick your head up, release your right arm, come to child's pose. And from here, walk your hands as far to the left as possible so that you're walking your right fingers as far away from your right hip as you can. Take a deep breath in. As you exhale, forehead to the ground in between your arms. Sit your hips as far away from your fingers as you can. Now, as you inhale, you may feel the stretch intensify as you sort of spread into that right side of the body. As you exhale, completely relax.
You can pick your gaze up, walk your hands back through center. You're gonna thread left arm under right. Rather than letting the right shoulder pop up, I want you to square your chest to the ground and gently let it fall towards the ground. Forehead can come down or the right temple. Now gently press your right armpit down. Pull your left shoulder head out to the left side. And then again, the weight of your chest just sort of falls on top of that left arm, stretching into it. Breathe here. When you're ready, pick your head up, left hand goes back out in front of you, walk both hands over to the right as far as they'll go, walking your left fingers away from your left hip, forehead to the ground, let your chest get heavy towards the ground, but every inhale, feel your left rib cage expand open, exhale. And then walk your hands back to child's pose. One more breath in and out. Walk yourself up to a table. And just notice how you feel already. Maybe a little more stretched out. Maybe you notice how tight your chest is. Maybe you notice how tight your hips are. Sway your hips side to side. And then come to neutral. And I want you to keep your palms grounded. Rock the weight forward to your fingers. Make sure your index knuckles are pressed down. And then just come to neutral. Again, rock the weight forward towards your fingers. And then just come through neutral. Last one, rock the weight forward. All 10 fingers are gripped into the ground, firmly rooted. Come back through neutral. So just Pick your palms up and place them down. Keep the long fingers on the ground so that you're stretching your knuckles in the opposite direction that you normally do. And then again, come to a table. And I want you to notice here where the weight is. Now, a lot of times we sit the weight back into that wrist crease area and you'll feel a lot of tension through the inner forearm. As you shift the weight forward into your fingers, you should feel that outer forearm turn on. When we are on our hands in plank, down dog, tables, wherever we are, I want you to keep weight in your fingers so that you feel that front forearm turn on. The more you dump your weight into your wrists, the less time you'll be able to spend on your hands, let's say. So it'll be a little more um, painful probably on your wrists. So just bring awareness to that. All 10 fingers rooted down from knuckle to fingertip, especially the index fingers. Rock the weight forward gently into your arms, into your hands. And now I want to spend just a little bit of time going over the shoulder blades. So first I want you to push into your hands, pull your shoulder blades apart, feel the protraction. I'm going to spin just a little so you can see. So suck your belly up really hollow, protract the shoulder blades, pull them apart. Now I want you to retract. So pull your shoulder blades together, belly might sag, chest moves down, elbows might bend. Squeeze them together, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Exhale, push them apart, protract. Inhale, ex or, I'm sorry, retract. So pull them together, protract, push apart, retract, reach together. Push apart, pull together. Now come to neutral. The next thing I want you to do is shrug your shoulders towards your ears. So your spine is long, your gaze is down, shrug your shoulders up towards your ears. Now pull them all the way down your back so your chest gently moves forward. And again, shrug them. And then you're going to set them back. So you shrug, that's elevation. And then set them back, that's depression. We're going to just call that setting it back now. Come to a neutral spine. And from here, I want you to find that setback, so shoulder blades as far away from your ears as you can. And as you do that, you should feel them gently retract at the bottom, so the bottoms of your shoulder blades gently pull together. Your, your chest should spread, that's good. I want you to keep that. Push down into your hands, feel like you're about to protract, but because your shoulder blades are set so far back, you can't round. Does that make sense? 
Pull your shoulder heads all the way back. Push into your hands like you're going to protract, but keep them where they are. From here, I want you to suck your belly button up like you're rounding your tailbone down. Keep your belly sucking up. Press your butt back, trying to lengthen your tailbone back. This is the table I want you to hold. You're just gonna stay right here, gaze at the ground and breathe. So feel how much is engaged in this really simple table. I want you to stay here breathing and just sort of scanning through your body. Shoulders pulling down the whole time. Set the shoulder girdle. Pushing into your hands, feeling like you're about to protract, but you're so strong and sturdy in that position that you can't go anywhere. Suck your belly up so much, but then reach your tailbone, your butt back behind you. Hold and breathe. Keeping all of the engagements from the crown of your head to your hips, I want you to reach your right leg back behind you. Internally rotate so that the inner right thigh lifts. Keep lifting your belly button, keep reaching your butt back, keep pushing into your hands. Move your right hand in just an inch. And if possible, you're either gonna tap your left fingers in front of you or reach your left arm up by your ear, but make sure your shoulder blades are still pulling down your back. Hold here. So belly button is up. There's no curve in your low back. Your belly doesn't hang towards the ground. Suck it up as much as you can the whole time. That's gonna turn your right glute on to lift your right heel. Take one more inhale. Exhale, bring everything down back to a table. Take a moment to find that shoulder blade set. Squeeze them together at the bottom and then push into your hands. Belly up, tailbone out. Left leg goes behind you. Internally rotate. Right arm can reach up or fingers to the ground. Still pulling your shoulder blades down your back, pinching them together at the bottom. Collarbones are spread, but you're pushing into your left hand. The low belly is strong, so the right or the left glute rather has to work to bring that left heel up. Take one more breath in, and then exhale. Everything comes down. Take a child's pose. This time, knees can stay close. You're going to bring your arms back by your side, forehead to the ground. Let it all rest. As we move today, I want you to keep an awareness of how amazing your body is, how many different systems are functioning at the same time to keep you moving, keep you breathing, keep you beating, keep you going. When you're ready, roll back through a table. Weight to the fingers, forearms fully engaged. Set your shoulder blades, so pull them down your back, pinch them together at the bottom, and then push into your hands. Now step your feet to a high plank. Hold here. So your belly sucks up, but I don't want you to, again, protract the shoulders. There's a really big tendency to do that here. Um, it may be an exercise, but for your plank, I want you to find that set shoulder. So shoulder blades down your back so that your chest almost moves forward through your biceps. Push down into your hands, but because the shoulder girdle is already set, you can't really protract them. Hollow your belly button up into your spine. Engage your glutes and engage your legs. Hold here and breathe. Something to be aware of is the weight in your index fingers. Make sure that we're not dumping back into the wrist. Next exhale, lift your hips, downward facing dog. So push into your hands to move back. So take your time here. I want you to pedal out, bend one knee, then the other. heels towards the ground. And so I want you to bend both knees here, stick your butt up as high as it will go towards the ceiling, press your chest back towards your thighs, take a deep breath in and out. Next inhale, shrug your shoulders towards your ears, shrug. Exhale, pull them down your back, set them down. Inhale, shrug. Exhale, set. One more time, inhale. Exhale, set. 
wrap your biceps forward so the armpits kind of close off towards the front of your body. Pull your shoulder blades down your back so that you feel them pinch together at the very bottom of the shoulder blade. And then push into your hands. But don't shrug your shoulders up towards your ears. Keep that set shoulder girdle and then push into your hands. Stick your butt up as high as you can go. Squeeze your glutes together and then from there press your heels towards the ground. Keep your knees as bent as you need to. Stay right in this down dog breathing. If you're able to press your heels to the ground and straighten your legs, really engage your quads. So stay in your down dog. I want you to notice all of the opposition that's happening, all of these sort of opposite pulls and pushes. <clears throat> that's why it's so important to keep your attention on what you're doing so that you know that you're doing what's proper for your body. That's also sort of the practice of yoga is being aware of all of these things and keeping your attention focused on them so you can optimize. Inhale, roll forward, high plank. There's so much going on in every single posture, every single movement that if you aren't fully focused on what you're doing, you couldn't possibly optimize. You couldn't possibly do your best. Next exhale, downward facing dog. Make sure your index knuckles are rooted, fingers are engaged. Inhale, roll forward, high plank. So just a few more of these. Exhale, downward facing dog. Each time you hit the posture, set the shoulder girdle. Inhale, high plank. Spread your collarbones here, very important. Exhale, down dog. And then one more time, find a high plank and an inhale. Just place your knees on the ground, so modified plank, exhale. Uncurl the toes, deep breath in. Lower halfway down, exhale. And then all the way down, relax. You can bring your hands out in front of you, a little um, pillow with your forearms. Stay for a few breaths. your gaze up. I want you to pull your ankle bones in. Notice the tendency for your heels to fall out. Ankle bones pull in. Feet don't have to touch, but let your legs be straight and engaged. Tent your fingertips out on either side of your mat. <clears throat> gaze goes straight down. From here, I want you to squeeze your shoulder blades together. So retract and then pull them down your back. Depression. And then push into your fingers and using your shoulder strength, using your upper back strength, I want you to gently lift your chest away from the ground. Pause here. Engage your glutes. Squeeze your low belly. Push into your fingers. See if you can lift a little bit higher now. Rather than using your arm strength, I want you to use your upper back strength. So keep pulling your shoulder blades down your back. Keep lifting. Keep breathing. So more important than getting high is that I want you to keep your upper back engaged. One more inhale here. Exhale, relax, forehead to your hands. And then again, you're going to bring your forehead back to the center, hands on either side. This time, I want you to inhale, lift your chest, lift your hands off of the ground so that you know your back is doing the work. Engage your glutes, engage your low belly. Inhale, lift away from the ground. Exhale, stay. Feel the whole back side turn on. Squeeze your shoulder blades. Inhale, lift a little higher, low back on. Exhale, stay. One more time. Inhale. Exhale, relax. Inhale through a table and then push back to a child's pose. When you're ready, through table, set the shoulders, curl your toes, downward facing dog. Take your time getting there. Pedal out if you need to. Shoulders down your back, push into your hands. Stick your glutes up, press your heels down. Breathe. Inhale, roll forward to a high plank. So chest is forward, shoulder blades down your back. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, high plank. Exhale, down dog. Belly is engaged the whole time. Inhale, plank. 
Belly lifts as you pull your chest forward, down dog, exhale. Inhale, high plank, hold. This time you can drop your knees or keep them lifted. You lower halfway down, hold. So resist the ground, push into your hands, hold. Lower all the way down. Inhale, lift right up to that baby cobra. Lift your chest, lift your hands. So the backside's doing the work. Stay here, exhale. Inhale, lift a little bit higher. Lead with your upper back rather than your chin. So keep the back of your neck long. One more inhale. Exhale, relax. Slide your hands all the way back so they're sort of between your, your low ribs and your hips. Inhale, lift up to a little cobra to start. Engage the upper back, engage your low belly, engage your glutes. From here, you have the option to, I'm sorry, keep your toes, um, the top of your feet down. Push into your hands. Maybe just lift up to a fuller cobra. Maybe you lift to an upward facing dog. So your arms go straight, your knees lift off of the ground. So you're on the tops of your feet and your hands. Engage your ankle bones towards one another. Inhale, engage the upper back, lift your chest, maybe lift your gaze. Everyone meets in a downward facing dog, so however you want to get there. From your down dog, walk your feet up to your hands, forward fold at the top of your mat. And once you're there, get really heavy, bend your knees as much as you need to keep your hamstrings protected. Grab opposite elbow, sway side to side. And then stay, get heavy. Like your down dog, engage your glutes and then stick them actively, stick them up to the ceiling. Rock the weight forward towards your toes. So as you stick your butt up higher, that's probably going to lead your legs a little bit straighter. Press into your feet. Think about pushing them apart as you squeeze your glutes together. Release your arms. Bend your knees and then roll all the way up to stand. So stacking your spine. Shoulders up, head up. Just roll out your neck. Roll out your shoulders. Come to stand at the top of your mat. Take a moment. Just come back to your breath. And back to your body. Attention is on what you're doing. Close your eyes just for a moment. And then just gently close them open. So standing at attention, I want you to push into your feet, engage your quads, engage your glutes. Engage your low belly, and I want you to feel a really gentle tuck under so that your hip bones kind of curl up towards your low ribs. Pull the front ribs together so we're not opening too far. So right here, we're also in extremely engaged. Inhale, sweep your arms up. Keep that engagement so hip bones are still lifting. Inhale. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Reach your chest forward, bring your hands to your shins, but not much weight there. Now engage your glutes, actively stick your butt back. Rock the weight forward to your toes, legs engage even more. Inhale again, exhale, forward fold. Flat spine, sweep your arms out, inhale, rise up. Pull your hip bones up, exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold one more time like that. Inhale, sweep up. Pull your hip bones up. Pull your belly in. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, forward fold. This time, pick your left foot up. Send it all the way to the back of your mat. Land as softly on that left foot as you can. So low lunge. Stay here. You can come onto your fingertips. Lower your hips towards the ground. Push into your right foot so that the right glute is active. And then pull the shoulder blades down your back. Reach your chest forward. Take a deep breath in. And an easy exhale. From here, left hand comes under your left shoulder. Right hand to your right thigh. Push into your right hand and then twist to the right. Look over your right shoulder. 
Now here, I want you to feel your left shoulder blade pull down your back. So pull it away from your ear, that same set we've been working on. Right shoulder blade pulls down and then opens up towards the ceiling. Keep your left, left leg really active or place your knee on the ground. Stay right here and breathe. If you want to lift your right hand up towards the ceiling, feel free to do that. Paying attention to your body. Can you open that left leg to the left a little more? Notice if your knee tends to bend in towards the right. One more breath. Right hand outside of your right foot. Drop your left heel down so that your left toes are pointed out to the left side. Inhale, your left arm up and around. Come up to a warrior two. So arms will reach out to a T. Shoulders will rest over top of your hip bones. I want you to actually bring your hands to your hips for a moment. Straighten the right leg. Square your hips so that they are square to the left outer edge of your mat. Keep them like that. Now re-bend the right knee. So your right knee will probably be at a sort of diagonal towards that top left corner of your mat. I want you to keep that. Engage your glutes and now press your right knee open towards your right pinky toe without letting your left hip bone pull forward. Hips stay square. Arms reach out, gazes over your right finger, breathe. Engage your pelvic floor, so just sort of pick it up underneath of you. Now I want you to straighten your right leg. Relax the leg for a second. And then re-bend into your right knee. Press your right knee out so that it is towards the pinky toe and you can see your big toe and the toe that's next to it. Look down, notice any tendency for your left hip to pull forward. Notice that and then gently pull the left hip back. Your right knee is already open. Hands go back over, gaze goes back over your right hand. Breathe here. So I want you to just notice those two different ways to come into a warrior two. Notice which one might serve you more. You might feel one more through the outer right hip, one through the inner thigh and hip. Whatever you feel you need most, feel free to take. One more time, inhale, straighten your right leg. This time, externally rotate the right leg so that your inner thigh spins forward and your knee gently rotates out towards the pinky toe. Pull your left foot in, so just heel toe it in like an inch or two. Inhale, reach as far forward as you can. Keep your right arm lifted. Stay for an exhale. I want you to sit your right hip as far back as it will go. Left hip bone spins down towards the ground. Reach a little bit farther. Inhale, and then exhale gently. Rest your right hand on your shin, your foot, or the ground outside of your right leg. Left arm up to the ceiling. Look up towards your left thumb. Extended triangle. Stay. So keep your right leg gently externally rotated. A lot of times we want to straighten it and then that kneecap rotates in. I want you to do the exact opposite. Rotate it out and then open your chest towards the ceiling. So you should feel a lot of twisting happening. Again, just noticing the opposition of the body right now. When you're ready, you're going to bend your right knee, come back up through warrior two, inhale, and then exhale, hands are going to frame your right foot, low lunge, lift your left heel, send your right leg, right foot all the way up to the ceiling behind you, so three-legged down dog, inhale, exhale, right foot meets left, downward facing dog, inhale, high plank, exhale, down dog, Inhale, plank. You can always stay in downward facing dog. Exhale, dog. Two more times. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Everyone, option to drop your knees. Pull your chest forward. Lower halfway. Hold. Inhale. Lower all the way down. Exhale. Next inhale, take your back bend. So maybe a little cobra, maybe a fuller cobra, maybe an upward facing dog. Take your time in your back bend, a breath or two. 
And then you can either move through table and child or come right to a downward facing dog. That's where we're gonna meet. From here, again, right leg to the sky. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, right knee to your nose. Roll forward towards the point, right knee to nose. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, right knee, right armpit. Hold here. Notice the tendency to want to drop your left hip. I want you to keep your left hip lifted. Push into both hands here. Shoulder blades are protracted. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, right knee, left armpit or elbow. Try not to bend the right arm. Try to keep chest square to the ground. So notice the tendency to like lean over to that right side. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, right foot between your hands. Drag it up, pull it up, step it up. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, forward, forward. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise up, arms up. Hips up, exhale, hands to your heart. Set your gaze or close your eyes. Reset, relax. Bringing your awareness back to your body, back to your breath. How can you optimize even just standing here? Open up your eyes as you're ready. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Step your right foot as softly to the back of your mat as you can. Come on to your fingertips, or if you have blocks, you can put blocks under your hands here if that feels good. Lower your hips as close towards the ground as they'll go, keeping your right knee lifting. Opposition. And then push into your left foot. Lower your hips as you pull your chest forward. So you don't want to lower them all the way down. You want to keep them lifted, belly lifted, chest broad. Right hand under your right shoulder. Left hand to left thigh. Push into your left hand to just twist open so that left shoulder stacks above your right. Maybe left hand stacks above left shoulder. Reach your left hip back and then lift your right leg and hip up. Open the left chest towards the ceiling. Breathe here. One more. Exhale, left hand to the ground. Dial your right heel down, so right toes pointed to the right side of your mat. Inhale, rise up, warrior two. Shoulders above hips. Bring your hands to your hips, actually. Straighten your left leg to start. Square your hips towards the right side of your mat. So again, notice the tendency if the left knee digs in towards the big toe, that's fine. From there, with your hips square to the right, I want you to bend into your left knee. Notice the tendency for it to go diagonal. Keeping your hips square, press your left knee towards the pinky toe, just as far as it will go without pulling your right hip forward. Keep the hips square for right now. I typically feel this mostly through that inner hip. Maybe you feel it through the inner thigh. You might feel it through the glute. Wherever you feel it, I want you to just stay. Belly is strong, arms can reach out. Hips are still square. You're gonna gently straighten the leg. Now, a little bit of external rotation, so just um, knee points straight out towards the toes. Rebend so that your left knee trails towards the pinky toe. Right hip bone probably pulls forward just a little bit. Just notice the difference in, in setting up. Arms reach out. As you press your left knee towards the pinky toe and keep it out to the side, gently open the right hip towards the back of the room. So a tiny bit of external rotation just in the thigh. And I, again, just notice the difference between the two. Think about pulling your heels towards one another. Engage the pelvic floor, pick it up. And now straighten your left leg. Bring your right foot in an inch or two. Externally rotate the left leg so that your right hip spins forward. Left knee points out to the pinky toe. 
Inhale, reach as long as you can. Hold, exhale. Deep breath in a little longer. Exhale, left hand to the ground or your leg. Right arm goes up to the ceiling. Even here, I want you to think about setting your shoulder blades. So shoulder blades down your back so that the left arm doesn't internally rotate towards you too much, the shoulder head poked forward. I want you to wrap it back, pull it down, hold here and breathe. Pushing into your left foot the whole time, keeping the left leg active. And again, as you externally rotate the left leg, it'll keep it engaged so that you don't hyperextend. You'll bend your left knee, inhale to a warrior two. Exhale, low lunge, hands frame your left foot, right heel lift. Three-legged dog on your next exhale. So left heel to the sky, inhale. Left foot meets right, exhale. Set the shoulders, press your heels, lift your hips. Last time, inhale, high plank. Exhale, down dog. You can always stay in down dog for these. Inhale, plank. Exhale, dog. Last one, everyone roll forward. Inhale, plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Hold. Lower all the way down. Inhale through baby cobra, stay. Exhale. And then inhale, maybe a fuller cobra, maybe an upward facing dog, maybe a slow entrance. We're gonna meet in child's pose, so push back through down dog if you like. Knees come down, quick little child's pose in between. When you're ready, meet me back in downward facing dog. A quick reset. Left heel to the sky, three legged dog inhale. Exhale, knee to your nose, roll forward towards plank, hold here, push into your hands, protract to the shoulders, inhale, three legged dog. Exhale, left knee, left armpit, hold here. Do not let that right hip drop, keep it up, keep pushing into both hands equally. Inhale, three legged dog. Exhale, left knee, right armpit. Try not to bend into the left elbow, push into both hands. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, left foot forward. Inhale, look forward, lengthen your spine. Exhale, step and forward, fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. From here, walk your feet as wide as your mat and then roll it up to stand. Shoulders back, head lifts, and roll out the shoulders, roll out the neck. With your feet wide, hands together, maybe close your eyes. Whatever you need to do, you're gonna stay here for a few breaths. Just tuning back in. Your body, your breath, your mind is here. When you're ready, you're gonna keep your hands at your heart, blink your eyes open. Spin your toes out so that they're pointed towards the top um, corners of your mat. And you're just gonna gently bend into your knees. Sit your hips down. You might need to wiggle your feet apart or closer, whatever feels best for you. And then oftentimes, you'll hear to press your elbows into your knees so as to spread them wider. Today, I want you to instead push into your feet and think about using your hip strength to send your knees wider. So don't use your elbows, let them rest there and sort of be guided out. But I want you to use your outer hip strength, glute strength to do that. And then think about lifting your chest as tall as it will go. Again, pelvic floor is engaged here. Stay and breathe. You can be as high as you need to also in this malasana. I want you to push into your feet and stand all the way back up. Hands still at your heart. Feel the glutes. Feel the hips. Toes turn in. And gently hinge at your hips. Fold it forward. Arms can hang heavy. You're just going to walk yourself back to a downward facing dog. 
roll forward to a high plank. Option to keep your knees lifted. You can always place them on the ground here though. What I want you to do is push into your hands, protract the shoulder blades in a plank. Hold here. Walk your toes in a little bit or your knees so that your shoulders come over your fingertips. And again, push into your hands. Keep the shoulders protracted. Start to bend your elbows a little bit. Pause. Push back into your hands, making sure they're active. Protract the shoulders a little bit more. Neck is long. Now, can you pull your shoulders down your back even protracted? Hold for three. Hold for two. Hold for one. Knees down, hips back, child's pose. Take a few breaths in, child's. So we're gonna do that one more time. And if you're working on any arm balances, that's going to be a, a very helpful um, upper body engagement to get used to. The reason I don't like to, to protract the shoulder blades and chaturanga too much is that it leads to a very closed off front side chest collarbone. So if you're like, what is she talking about? Don't even worry about it. <laughs> Come back to a table, meet me in a downward facing dog. Inhale to a high plank, last time, push into your hands, pull the shoulder blades apart, protract, but try to keep your shoulder heads away from your ears. Now walk your toes in a little bit so your shoulder heads move forward towards the fingertips. Bend your elbows just a little bit, elbows point back, push into your hands, hold here for three. Lift your belly the whole time, two, push. One, knees down, child. Just roll it up to a seat and so before we go any further I'm gonna give you the option to yeah now work on um, a crow pose so just one crow pose if you have any kind of pillow maybe you put it out in front of you if this is your first time working on crow but that exact shoulder engagement that we just went through with the protracted shoulders but you're still pushing into your hands is what you're gonna use for that arm balance I find that the shoulders are engaged very differently in most arm balances but for right now, I want you to find that engagement. That's going to help push your arms straight. It's gonna help with if you ever wanna press up to handstand. And again, wherever you are is where you are, but just know that we're always building on top of all of these different things. So you're just gonna come up to a little toe stand. So standing on your toes, <clears throat> knees into your chest. And for a crow pose, I'm gonna just show you here and then I'm gonna show you if you wanna use the wall. <clears throat> hands palms to the ground you're going to lift your butt up and place your knees behind your upper arms so rather than outside i want you to maybe give it a try knees behind your arms look forward and shift forward so that again your shoulders are past your fingertips elbows are hopefully above your wrists now protract the shoulder blades and then push into your hands lift your belly like you did in plank maybe work on lifting one foot placing it down lift the other place it down you're pushing into your hands, lifting your head the whole time. Maybe you lift both feet, push into the hands. Maybe you work the arms straight, lift your belly up. Whatever you want to do, play with that. And if you've never done crow and you need a little more support and you don't have blocks, if you know how to use blocks, go for it. You can come to the wall for your crow. It might take a little adjusting, finding how close or far you need to be. But think about having like um, a little more than knee to hip distance from the wall, the pillow in front of you for support, hands out in front of you, knees behind your armpits. We're going to start the same way, butt might touch the wall, that's fine. You're going to hinge forward, find that same shelf, so knees on arms, hinge forward, shoulders past fingers, push into your hands, maybe lift one foot, place it on the wall, bring it down. If you need to shift further or closer, go for it. Maybe lift one foot, place it on the wall. If you want to place both feet on the wall and sort of rest on them, go for it. And then work on coming onto your toes, shifting the weight away from the wall, pushing into your hands the whole time. Play with that. I'm getting out of breath. And so feel free to play with either of those crows for a minute. And if you're at the wall and you have both feet against the wall, you're just sort of staying here, working forward, forward, forward while pushing down to lift up. So you can stay and breathe. Maybe you teeter-totter back and forth from the wall. We're gonna meet in a child's pose on our mat whenever we're done. 
knees wide, knees together, arms forward, arms behind you, whatever works. Take a couple breaths. And that was just for fun. Not necessarily to test your strength so much as to test your awareness as to where you are. Can you accept if you need a wall? Can you accept if you can't get your feet off of the ground? Can you just be okay wherever you are knowing that you're putting the effort and the energy into progressing? Not necessarily for any um, you know, particular end game. You're working on progressing for progression. Practicing to get better and in time better and better and better. That's what we're doing all day long. From your child's pose, make your way into a down dog. We're almost there. Inhale your right heel to the sky. Exhale, one more time, knee to nose. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, right armpit. Keep the left hip lifted, hold it. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, left armpit, hold it. Inhale, three-legged dog. Pigeon prep. So bring your right shin forward. Place your right foot outside of your left wrist. And then lower your shin down so your right knee goes behind your right wrist. Wiggle the left toes back. Come up to sit. Inhale. Exhale. Gently make your way down to your forearms. Maybe you walk your hands out. Chest towards your calf or the ground. Maybe forehead to the ground. Or you can bring that pillow out in front of you. Whatever feels best. Easing into your pigeon, I want you to try to wrap your left hip bone forward. Notice any tendency for it to pop up. Stick your right glute back. Try to have your right knee pointed out towards the top right corner of your mat. And try to have it outside of the right rib cage. So rather than right in front of, I want you to have it out. From there, relax down, breathe. And when you're ready, you're going to make your way back to your hands. Take your time getting here. Lift your chest up. Curl your left toes under. Send it back to a three-legged dog right heel to the sky. Right toes to the ground. Inhale, plank and hold. Shoulder girdle set back. Chest forward. Belly up. Glute strong. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, left heel high. Three-legged. Exhale, knee to your nose. Inhale up. Exhale, left armpit. Keep the right hip lifted. Inhale up. Exhale, right armpit. Inhale up. Now exhale, come forward. Left foot outside of your right hand. Place the shin down so it's pointed out to the left. And then wiggle your right leg back. Sit up nice and tall again. Try to have your knee outside of the rib cage rather than straight in front of when you're ready, come to your forearms or your forehead, whatever works for you. Stay here breathing. So whether you prefer yoga or think of yoga as strenuous or more just easy stretching, know that both are important. Um, I like to think of the physical asana part of yoga as an instrument to use to keep the body vital. So just moving your body in any way that's different from what you normally do, whether you sit a lot, stand a lot, walk in a straight line a lot, just using your body in different ways. So as to keep it functioning up, like optimally. 
Take one more breath. So, so relaxed into that left hip. Soften down. And then make your way up to your hands. Curl the right toes. Send the left leg back. Three-legged dog. Inhale. Exhale. Flip to the ground. Walk yourself forward. Forward fold one more time. And then just bend your knees. Come to a seat on your mat. Legs out in front of you. Sit up tall. So come to Dandasana. <clears throat> Legs straight out in front of you. Knees bent if you need to. If you have really tight hamstrings, you can put your butt up on a block or a pillow or something. Work the meat out behind you. Flex your toes towards you. Inhale, sit up tall. If you're able to straighten your legs, go for it. Exhale, forward fold. Lead with your chest. So rather than rounding, bringing your chin down towards your knees, I want you to spread the shoulder blades. So retract the shoulder blades. <clears throat> Spread your chest, excuse me, and then reach as far forward as you can. Think about getting your ribs attached to your thighs. And if you want to bend your knees a little bit so that you can do that, go for it. Hands can walk out in front of you on either side of your feet. Grab your feet, whatever you want to do. Inhale, look forward, lengthen forward. Exhale, just as deep as you can go like this. Exhale, fold. So keep your gaze out in front of you to encourage that lengthening of your spine the broadening of your chest actively stick your butt back behind you the more that you round here the more the work will go into your back your low back rather than into the backs of your legs like we want it to so flex the feet stick the glutes back engage the glutes And then roll it up to a seat. You're gonna bend your right knee foot to the floor. You can either keep your right foot inside of your right knee or your left knee or bring it outside of the left leg. Left hand to right knee, inhale, right arm reaches up. And then I want you to circle it back behind you. Exhale, open up to the right side, right fingers to the ground. Try to keep the crown of your head over top of your pelvic floor so don't lean back towards that right hand. Inhale, sit up tall, puff up the chest, squeeze the shoulder blades. Exhale, twist to the right, look over your right shoulder. Again, not too much weight in that right hand. If you want to hug your left elbow around your right knee, feel free. You might feel a stretch through the outer right hip. Keep the right glute grounded. If you want to bring your left elbow outside of your knee and push into that upper arm, go for it. That might help you go deeper into your twist. A few breaths here. Gently unwind. Bring your right foot back inside of the left thigh, and you're going to let your right knee fall open to the right. Sit up nice and tall. Square your chest over top of the left leg, and then I want you to inhale, reach your right arm up. Exhale, reach as long forward as you can. Right hand grabs the left foot. So if you need to bend your left knee a lot, do that. But again, no rounding in the backside. Push forward through your chest. Work your butt back away from you. Take a deep breath in, lengthen your spine, so push your chest forward, pull on the right arm. As you exhale, fold towards the left leg. Now, the more you pull on your right arm, the more you should feel this through the um, right low back. So inhale, lengthen forward, reach through your chest. Exhale, pull on the right arm, go a little bit deeper into the stretch. And the more that you pull the right knee behind you away from you, the more that will also intensify the stretch in the right low back. Come up to a seat, close the right knee, send it out in front of you, shake it up. Left foot comes in, can either stay inside or come outside of the right leg. Right hand to left knee, inhale, left arm up. Exhale, circle it behind you, fingers to the ground, and just start by broadening your chest on an inhale, keeping the crown over top of your pelvic floor. Exhale, twist to the left. Maybe your right elbow hugs your knee and pulls you deeper into the twist. Maybe you hook your elbow outside, push yourself deeper into the twist. Try not to lean into that left arm. Breathe. And you're ready 
you're just going to gently unwind, left foot back inside of the right leg, and then open it out to the left. So again, the more that you pull your left heel closer to your pelvic floor and send your left knee behind you or away from you, the more intense this will make the stretch. So the further up towards your knee, the less intense, the closer towards your pelvic floor, the more intense. Twist over top of your right leg. I should have told you that on the other side. <laughs> Inhale your left arm up. Exhale, elongate, reach it forward. Exhale, grab the right foot. Bend your right knee as much as you need. Inhale, look forward, reach it forward. Exhale, fold towards the right leg. Hinge at your hips, so actively stick your glutes away from you. Reach your chest forward. You can drop your nose in time, but don't reach with your nose. Pull on the left hand, and the more you pull and reach your glute away from your arm, the more intense you'll feel that stretch through the left low back. Breathe. Roll it up to a seat. Close the left knee, send it out in front of you, shake it out. And then just scoot your hips forward, come down to lie on your back. So knees bent up towards the ceiling, feet on the floor, arms are by your side. I want you to pick your chest up, tuck your shoulder blades together, and then place your chest back down. Moving into bridge pose, push into your feet, lift your hips up off of the ground. So lift your glutes. If you want, you can interlace your hands under you, bring your forearms towards one another, tuck your shoulder blades together a little more, retract a little more. And then push into your feet, lift your hip bones up, engage your glutes. For a while, we would hear not to engage our glutes, but that puts a lot of pressure on the low back. So engage your glutes, engage your pelvic floor, and then push into your feet to lift up higher. Keep reaching your knuckles towards your heels to create some room for your neck, your throat. One more inhale, release your hands, roll back down. Your butt is the last thing to rest. Keep your feet on the floor, maybe knock your knees together. Just take a couple breaths here. And we're going to do just one more bridge pose. So set your feet, set your arms, lift your chest to tuck your shoulders. And then push into your feet, lift your hips up. If you like to interlace your hands, feel free. Wiggle the shoulders and upper arms together. And then push into your feet to lift your hips, squeeze your glutes, and then maybe walk your knuckles closer to your heels. Create more room for your neck. Reach the crown of your head away from your heels to create more room for your throat. Breathe. One more breath in, you're going to exhale, release your hands slowly, roll all the way back down. Bring your feet together, knees go wide, stay here. So feet together, knees wide, supine bound angle, you stay there and need to let breath out. In your supine bound angle, letting your inner hips and thighs just sort of relax down. So if you like, you can let your low back lift and sort of tilt your tailbone out. If it feels better to tuck your tailbone under and broaden your low back or press it towards the ground, do that. And maybe play with both. Stick your butt out and then reach it under. You'll probably feel a more intense stretch one way or the other. Whichever feels best, feel free. And then relax. From here, slowly draw your knees close. Walk your feet as wide as your mat. Keep your feet wide. Drop both knees so they're pointed to the left. And so as you press your knees towards the ground, you'll feel a stretch through the front of your right hip. Feel free to stay here or grab a hold of your right heel with your right hand and pull it over towards that right elbow. It may make you um, 
bring you a little bit deeper into the stretch. Stay here and breathe. When you're ready, you're gonna slide your right knee. Keep your left leg where it is. Slide your right knee over on top of the left and then bring your knees as close to the left arm as you can. Maybe rest your left hand on top of the outer right thigh and pull the right hip away from your right shoulder. Make sure the right shoulder blade stays grounded so you're in a supine twist. Both knees over to the left. Right arm out like a T to the right. Look at your right thumb. As you inhale, elongate through your spine so the crown of your head and your hips move away from one another. As you exhale, twist deeper. So right shoulder blade presses down, right hip bone moves in the opposite direction towards the left. Take two or three breaths here. And when you're ready, you're just gonna bring your knees through center, draw some little circles one way or the other, little low back massage, and then place your feet on the floor. Walk them as wide as your mat, and then drop both knees over to the right. Stay or grab a hold of the left foot, pull it over to that left side as much as you can. So low back, left glute can pop off of the ground here. Press your left knee down gently, feel the stretch through the front of the left hip leg. Look over your left elbow if that feels okay, breathe here. When you're ready, you're going to keep your right leg where it is, slide the left knee over on top of the right, and then pull them both up towards the right elbow. Maybe your right hand rests on top of the outer left knee, left arm reaches out to the left. Take a deep breath in, and then exhale, press your left shoulder blade into the ground. Using your right hand, you can sort of pull the left leg over to the right. Feel your left hip bone move forward so that it stacks on top of the right but your chest is square to the ceiling. Every exhale going a little bit deeper into that twist. Stay here and breathe. And in your own time, you'll come back through center. Give the knees a hug, maybe a little shift side to side. And then place both feet on the floor one more time. Send your right leg straight up to the sky. Start to walk your hands up the back of your leg. Give it just one last little stretch. Maybe pick your nose up to your right knee. Maybe straighten your left leg or keep your foot on the ground. Just one last little stretch here. And then you're going to release your head and release your right foot. So very gentle, very quick. Extend the left leg. Walk your hands up. Maybe lift your nose up to your knee. One last little stretch. Hold it as long as you like. Head comes down right into um, a happy baby. You're going to grab a hold of your feet, knees on either side of your armpits. Think about bringing your um, inner thighs on either side of your rib cage. So right inner thigh to right rib cage, left inner thigh to left rib cage. As you pull your knees down, I want you to lengthen your tailbone away from you. So try to keep your low back on the ground. Maybe rock side to side, maybe bend and straighten one leg the other. Whatever feels good to you, you can move around however feels best. And when you're ready, you're going to bring your feet back to the floor. Walk your feet out in front of you. If you feel like you need an upper back or chest stretch, bring your arms down by your side. Sort of tuck your fingers underneath of your butt. Elbows in towards your ribs. Push into your forearms to lift your chest off of the ground. Moving into fish pose, you'll just tilt your head back. Keep pushing into your forearms to lift your chest up. Open up the chest area. One more breath in. And then you're going to gently roll it down. You might need to bring your knees in one more time for a couple circles for the low back. But in time, you're just going to meet me in Shavasana. So legs are going to walk out in front of you. Shoulder blades pull down. 
palms can face up or down. And if you want to keep your eyes open, try to find something to look at. If you're able to close your eyes, close your eyes. So you just worked your body in preparation for this stillness. You just focused your mind on what your body was doing. So now that your body is lying here still, see if you are able to be here still. If you need something to focus on, focus on the inhale, the exhale. And as you practice your ability to stay here in stillness with whatever comes up, you're training to stay with whatever comes up out in the real world. Because it's not always very easy to just lie here and be still without our mind going off on a rampage. So for the next few moments, try to keep your attention right here on your mat, on your body, on your breath. Every time you find it wandering away, pull it back. All we can do is what we can do right now. Just breathe. See if you can take three breaths in a row without your mind wandering at all. If you can't, start over. Just a moment or so. Stay there breathing. When you're ready, keeping the clarity of your mind, just start to wiggle your fingers, your toes, if they just came in with your hand. Start to roll your wrists, your ankles, turn your head side to side. And gently walk your feet to the floor. You're going to roll over to your right side, all the way onto your right. Right arm can be a pillow. Breath in. Surrender. You're going to take your time to gently meet me up in a comfortable seat. Sitting up as tall as you can, shoulder blades down your back. Find something to look at on the floor and with the intention of focusing your or your, your mind on your body, I want you to just take an easy breath in and out. All we can do is exactly what we can do right now. So with that, can you focus your attention on what you're doing so as to optimize? If all you're doing is walking your dog or feeding your kids, bring your full attention to that. You've got bills to pay, you've got jobs to do, but all you can do is what you can do now. Take a breath in, exhale. Hands together at your heart, bow your head down, take one last inhale. Exhale, tilt your chin up, open up, invite in light, seek that light, or be that light, the light in me honors the light in you. Namaste. Thank you, guys.